So welcome back to the, um, what was supposed to be the 510 uh, uh, talk or so. We're running a couple of minutes late, as you might have noticed. But the next um, topic is about hacking health. And the way I got introduced to this topic was when I had a lab student from Egypt who had lost his leg um, in a tragic accident. Um, he came over to Germany to, uh, to have a uh, prosthetic, um, uh, prosthetic kind of fitted to himself. And what did he do with it when he had it for the first time? He started hacking it. <laughs> Because it never quite fits. It never quite works the way he wants it. And I think uh, this will be an interesting talk. Um, Cassandra Mamich is, um, you know, is, is of the uh, Global Innovation Gathering, which is a, an, a makers and innovators lab. And I think this whole idea of DIYing your own health um, is actually a really powerful idea. So let me hand it over to Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> so, thanks for coming. That's great. Um, I will be presenting uh, carables.org, which is a um, platform on hacking health, so how you can improve your own life in a makerspace or in a hackerspace. And I'm part of the Global Innovation Gathering, as a more wonderful Harold just uh, mentioned. So we are a network, a community of uh, global makers, mainly based in Asia, in Africa and in South America, but also with a few people in uh, Europe. And uh, I will dive directly into the topic because I only have 20 minutes. So what's the problem uh, on uh, healthcare and um, all these uh, different devices and assistive um, tech uh, that's helping us uh, live our lives uh, better. Well, first, uh, for many use cases, um, just um, the solution doesn't exist. Um, then there are many solutions that are very, very expensive, and then there are so many more uh, that just suck because they are not really uh, beautiful. So. If we live the standard, uh, like, abled life, uh, we don't really ne notice a lot of the problems uh, people, for example, in a wheelchair uh, face when uh, not even getting uh, to the post, uh, like, post box. And <laughs> or um, some devices, like these screen reading devices, are so expensive, um, and if you just uh, build them yourself uh, in a hacker space, uh, you can get them uh, for like 250 euros or something uh, if you just uh, want to do it yourself. And uh, then here's uh, the example for, for being really, really ugly things uh, that come from a medical store and that makes you feel very ill, like uh, <laughs> the crutch we just see here. Uh, they make you feel ill and you don't want to feel ill. You just lead your normal life um, and uh, maybe you need some assistive tech for it. So the solution, of course, is uh, hacking everything uh, like uh, we just heard. Um, You hack it yourself uh, because you know best. Uh, you are the expert on your own problems, on your own uh, things you want to be ad have adjusted. Um, you want to make them uh, replicable. You want to make them adaptable so other people can uh, copy it, uh, can fork it, can adapt them uh, in their own hacker space uh, and uh, create something new out of it. And for this reason, you need to have it open and documented so others can really work with your designs. And also you can get inspired by the designs of others. So it all started um, in Berlin with uh, the PubLab Berlin and Be Able. We have wonderful people from Be Able here as well. I'm very happy for that. Um, and organizing some co-creation sessions um, on uh, wheelchair, so it's called Made for My Wheelchair. Then we had uh, a few groups uh, in Bach in Amsterdam and a few groups in uh, Milan. And they were all like, uh, we're doing this in our hacker spaces or in our maker spaces and we should do it together and like spread the whole um, idea. And there are many more of these kinds of initiatives in uh, the whole world who are doing assistive tech, DIY, um, accessibility tools. Um, so here's an example of how um, the Made for My Wheelchair project created out of the need of people in the wheelchair uh, some really beautiful lights um, that everybody could use, uh, everybody could create in their uh, makerspace and that looked just nicer than uh, anything you could find before. And you can uh, like 3D print the casing, uh, you can uh, solder yourself so it's all Uh, creatable in a makerspace. Um, the most important thing um, 
for this is not just because I have a 3D printer in my uh, hacker space, I just create some stuff that nobody uses, but it's actually um, the, the core principle to either create something for yourself, so uh, if I have a healthcare need, I, I'm the maker, or uh, find, find other makers who help you uh, if you are uh, the person that maybe is not yet as uh, acquainted with uh, prototyping technologies, for example. And I have a world premiere today, um, the, the academy um, that is happening. Oh, everybody's applauding already for that. <laughs> That's really nice. Oh, no. I'm so sorry, I didn't try that. So, we all listen to it without the sound. <laughs> World premiere uh, of a video of the Academy, where Sven, uh, who's uh, using a wheelchair, uh, who's a photographer, he really wanted to have a bicycle again. Uh, and so, uh, during the Academy in Berlin, um, he found a team of great, uh, like an engineer and somebody uh, from the medical field, uh, and they created this bicycle together. Um, the Academy is a hack, hack, hackathon format that is like going for 10 years. Uh, you see it without distortions, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> because uh, the screen here doesn't show it so well. Um, the distortion is just on the uh, monitor yeah. for you. Yeah, I saw it. Shall I try the sound again? Can you know, plug the uh, three and a half millimeter jack to the laptop? No. <laughs> ah, here. Haha. -ha. Ja, das sieht doch super aus. Sven kann alleine auf- und absteigen. Okay, zurück auf die Academy. Es sind nur noch zwei Tage bis zur Präsentation. So Zeit of the mood impressions. Ja, ich and bin so ehrlich gesagt total gerührt irgendwie, so herzerwärmend. Das Team ist so geil und es hat so viel Spaß gemacht, das Fahrrad zu bauen und jetzt an einem Punkt zu sein, wo er auch damit fahren kann. Herzlich willkommen bei der Open Health Academy Nummer 2. Alles für diesen Moment. So Sven uh, created this bicycle um, with a team uh, at the Academy uh, in this uh, October in Berlin. And uh, also with the help of Cardus, like we saw in the video uh, when I was like, doing things here. Oh, um, so. <laughs> but this uh, is yeah, just an example of um, what is possible if you just put some hackers in a, in a, in a camp and uh, they create together um, for the need of it. So, these caravels, as I explained, are replicable and adaptable in a makerspace. Um, they are like things that are very complex uh, that you can create um, uh, knowing how, uh, for example, a child with a special neurological disease uh, also wanted to have a bicycle, and so um, his uh, therapist, uh, together with makers in the Fab Lab, uh, in the Open Dot Fab Lab, uh, created this. Um, and it's also like a lot of parts uh, that you can just uh, create yourself uh, that are well documented, um, and where you. Um, yeah, can replicate it also for another child, uh, adapt it um, uh, to uh, a specific new need. And it was already uh, replicated twice for two other children. Um, then uh, during the course uh, of our program, we already designed uh, or co-designed uh, uh, with the people uh, in the different groups um, many more um, projects. And so I want to showcase two that are very fun and uh, that you uh, 
can uh, yeah, also get yourself a kit and uh, create it yourself. The one is uh, the Jedi style uh, white cane. So a white cane, um, if you're blind and walk into the streets in the night or at Congress, uh, you want to be visible. And so uh, this lady over there, uh, she really wanted to have um, Uh, Yeti style white cane and uh, within the academy they created it um, and now it's a kit that you can uh, order online as well or yeah, just replicate it yourself but it's very complex uh, and the other one less complex uh, is the e-scooter for wheelchair users so if you have a wheelchair that is manual basically um, you uh, with this um, wood device, uh, you can attach it to one of those electronic scooters and you can have um, the scooter power your wheelchair. And it's very fun, not only for wheelchair users, of course, uh, and it's uh, with very basic material, uh, replicable, um, like from your local supply store uh, across the street. So, um, and of course, the food bike I already showed. Mm. And the main part um, of this should also be about um, the platform that we created where you can all like either get inspired or also um, yeah, upload your own um, documentation of your own assistive tech projects. So, and I want to demo this uh, more like live because it's, yeah, it's a website. We shouldn't sh look at uh, screenshots of it. Um, so we so far collected like a hundred uh, assistive tech projects and our goal is to like collect uh, a lot more so uh, you have one open hardware platform where you can find uh, things uh, that you want to replicate and in the case uh, that we don't have the full uh, documentation uh, on this website which is not necessary because there are so many uh, platforms of course um, just link uh, to the original documentations on any other platform uh, or even on, on your GitLab um, that is already available. So um, with this, uh, we want to show like the variety of uh, open hardware projects in healthcare. Um, and uh, of course, it has uh, yeah, features uh, that are just usual for um, the for open hardware platforms, but also our goal is to uh, write stories around why this is really something uh, meaningful. Uh, for example, this Glypho, and I also brought it, um, so you can touch it, um, and you can also, of course, uh, 3D print it yourself. Um, this is created together with the theraparts uh, of the children with this neurological disease. So the children uh, put their hand in the wrong posture uh, due to the illness, and the theraparts um, saw that uh, using uh, such a device uh, could help them uh, go in the correct posture again. And the children, of course, have a lot of fun uh, with writing because they can't uh, hold the pen uh, uh, without uh, some assistance. And the platform, of course, has uh, also like previews, um, has uh, file previews and such things. And uh, we try to have uh, lots of very different projects. Uh, here's another one that is more on 3D printing and where you can uh, use um, a project to, for example, in a humanitarian emergency, uh, uh, yeah, create medical supplies that are not as easy to transport uh, into, um, into the country where you are uh, working at the moment. So also this has some previews. And the big announcement we have is um, that our platform uh, is uh, currently being open sourced and that's uh, like the last uh, few, um, few uh, things are done. Uh, so that's actually uh, like an actual open hardware platform that is open source because most of them are not. Um, and that's something very uh, meaningful for, for me and like for, for most people uh, in our team uh, in case of uh, like uh, we get EU funding, for example, for this project. Uh, so it's important that we have the, the public money, public code uh, approach uh, and that uh, everybody can also contribute uh, in the future um, to this project. Yeah, so. So, so you can, uh, we have a lot 
put lots of uh, energy into asking ourselves how can we make the platform in a way that also like non-tech uh, people can understand uh, and that you have a lot of questions uh, asked when uh, creating a project um, that help you reflect on how somebody uh, can document because uh, we see um, while talking with many people that documenting uh, your own projects is the hardest part and helping um, to do that better is uh, yeah, very crucial. And so the other part of the platform is um, a more inspiring um, part of uh, yeah, very low-key stories um, where uh, you can find out more about the projects and the backgrounds. Uh, of course, also all the events, uh, if you're creating uh, a co-creation session or presentations or a conference around um, open hardware and healthcare, uh, we would love to feature it there. Uh, and we have a lot of um, like toolkits um, to help people create their own story. Um, so like how you can create a co-design session. Uh, if you've never done that, um, try to help um, also with this. Mm, so there are several toolkits um, available for that. Also training material for medical professionals, how they can like learn 3D printing and all these things. Mm. And that's uh, the most important parts of the project. And I'm very, very happy to uh, speak to you individually if you have any ideas uh, how we can bring this to your own hackerspace or how we can bring this to your own uh, like therapeutic um, uh, yeah, organization or how you want to contribute to it or how we can help you uh, also create things for yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah, I, I love this project. Um, so do we have any questions from the audience? We have a couple of minutes. Any, anything from the internet? Not yet? Okay. Did I miss somebody? Ah, so oh, there we go. Typically, there are a lot of uh, regulations for medical devices. Um, are there any plans to get the... Uh, yeah, medical devices certified internationally? Or? Um, so there's so many layers to this question, of course. Uh, so many things um, that we are doing is like um, giving you um, the knowledge how to cr recreate uh, your own project. And if you just uh, are a maker for yourself, you yeah, can do m many things. Uh, and a big part, uh, and you see here the, the partners of the project, is uh, the legal part, um, where we have uh, with Kau Leuven um, legal uh, team um, of two researchers uh, who also publish, um, like, who, who think a lot about these questions of liability, of certification, and how we can uh, tackle those. And also how maybe the medical devices regulation that is uh, coming into effect in May uh, next year, uh, next year um, is uh, working uh, for us or against us or uh, yeah such things and and there's a lot of exploration how to um, move around uh, in this field like how can I um, get some insurance as a maker if I create something for somebody who can't create it themselves uh, like who just doesn't have the physical ability to uh, push the button of the 3D printer or whatever um, yeah, I would definitely like to uh, exchange more ideas about that. <laughs> so one question in the front. Yeah. I have no question, uh, but I would like to add that we um, built a platform. Um, it's called Match My Maker. Oh, yes. mm. And if you are a maker and have um, fun to, to create healthcare stuff, so please connect with us, uh, matchmymaker.de. Um, and if you have any ideas and you are not a maker, but you need healthcare stuff, so please get in touch. Yeah. Yeah, so Thank it's you. basically like a whole ecosystem uh, worldwide of people working in assistive tech projects who are working in healthcare and making projects and try to um, yeah, support um, or try to support many of those initiatives and also work closely together also with the Mo, who uh, spoke about the DIN regulation of open hardware earlier, and um, yeah, with many of uh, those initiatives. Yeah. So we could take one short question. Do we have one short question? 
over there Hello somewhere. There. I don't I don't see him. Oh. Sorry. Oh 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 oh. <laughs> Hi. Um, is there some kind of moderation, like on your platform? If I if I submit something that's completely dangerous, like on based on what criteria you say we put this up on the platform, and what do you not accept? So so far, um, we have very strict criteria because we're like curating um, all of this uh, ourselves at the moment, and we also have like medical professionals in the group um, who are like very strict about that. Um, um, but of course, um, there are so many things that are not hurtful and that like also have maybe low quality, um, but that we could just have on the platform as well. But uh, we, um, yeah, look into all the projects and try to determine um, how how well is it documented, um, and also try to have like replica replication sessions. Um, so that we can see is this actually replicable. Um, I mean, it's not possible for all of the projects because we now have uh, already a hundred um, that we found that are like on a high standard, but yeah, it's definitely something we want to have, like the field ready test or something, yeah. So with that, we are at the end of our talk. We have to wrap up now. Thank you very much, Sandra, for this yeah. wonderful talk and this wonderful idea and project. Thank you.